Jade Cargill faced off with Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch. Badass five women feud forming for Rhea Ripley's World Women's Championship. Everyone wants piece of Becky Lynch from Indy to Zaya. And emo Julia Hart virus alert. Sky Blue and Willow Nightingale are all emo. <laughs> Welcome if you're entering the bell, this is DS and this is Women's Wrestling Weekly. In my Nightwing outfit, because Halloween's coming so soon, and I just got back from Poundtown Wrestling in Los Angeles by Ariane Andrew. It was heck of a show. And I got to interview Sonic Kiss, who just recently left AEW, so that's coming to ring the bell soon. And let's jump into everything that happened in this week's Women's Wrestling. But before that, make sure to glam slam that subscribe button. All right, let's jump right into WWE SmackDown. All right, so on SmackDown, we had a singles match, Zelina Vega versus Bayley. Haven't seen Zelina in a while in the ring. And of course, Bailey was accompanied by Dakota Kai and WWE Women's Champion EO Sky. And after Bailey helped EO to retain the title at Fastlane, EO is so respectful, so grateful, letting Bailey get all the spotlight just being politely on the side. But seriously, storyline aside, I really wish EO was presented more like the center of this SmackDown women's division because guess who's always in the center? It's Charlotte Flair. So the match was cute. Zelina knows that this is a rare opportunity to show or remind her in-ring skills. So she went in there, showed tons of new stuff that she's been working on that bottom rope 619 was cute some of the moves i felt there were like a little bit of hesitation but overall i think both zelina and bailey looked really great here and at the end using eo's distraction bailey hits rose plan to pick up a win from zelina post-match beatdown and who comes out Woo! The Charlotte Flair with beautifully stoned bodysuit and very high heels run in for the save. This was a fun match. Uh, good, not bad. And then we saw Mickey James's handsome husband, Nick Aldis, officially the new general manager of SmackDown in office, and the WWE Women's Tag Team Champions Chelsea Green and Piper Niven come in to annoy him about the curse of the tag titles, which I gotta say is a legitimate issue, saying that maybe they should just make new pair of champion belt, which is like again a legitimate way to solve this curse, maybe, or maybe just follow through with that. Pro promo of Alba and Isla being the ones who cursed it. That makes a lot more sense. But Aldis dismisses the champions to talk to Charlotte Flair and grants her the WWE Women's Championship match next week against EO Sky, citing that she made Asuka tap out while referee was distracted at Fastlane. And as a satisfied Charlotte Flair was leaving the office, she runs into Triple H escorting Jade Cargill. And oh my god. No, I was always more about Jade versus Bianca, but I see why people wanted Charlotte versus Jade too. They both have that regal quality about them that just by looking at each other, the energy was so electrifying. I could feel it all the way from the, I don't know, outside of TV. And I love how fake coy they were to each other. The way they said, it's my pleasure. Oh. It will be. It was just so polite, but so bitchy. I love it all. And I don't know why, but this kind of reminded me of how Phyllis and The Office used to be really shady to Pam. That's kind of random. But I love this interaction so much. Oh, this is going to be a good one. I love this energy. <sighs> so excited. And this video is brought to you by Manscaped.com. And it is my pleasure to introduce you to the latest cutting edge breakthrough, the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra from Manscaped. Let's be honest. In a sea of options to choose from to perfect your grooming routines, Manscaped have been my absolute favorite. With the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra, they've taken grooming precision to a whole new level with their next gen dual skin safe blade heads, now accompanied by an upgraded trimmer blade and interchangeable foil blade for an enhanced performance. So, first, the upgraded trimmer blade features longer, wider, and rounded teeth that cut through hair with ease, tough on hair yet incredibly gentle on the skin, and the foil blade. This foil blade is designed to leave you with the finish that's irresistibly sleek and utterly bare. So basically what I do is I start my trimming using the trimmer blade and then just pop it off and attach this foil blade to get down to getting real smooth. LED light, this time it's bigger than before and has dual temperature feature for variety of skin tone. And of course, this one has all your favorite Manscaped features of rechargeable battery and waterproof feature. I do love shaving in the shower. So join the 9 million men and 18 million balls worldwide who's put their confidence in Manscaped for all things grooming, head over to manscaped.com and get your hands on the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra today and use my promo code BELL, B-E-L-L-E, -E, to get 20% off plus free international shipping at the checkout. That's 20% off plus free shipping with promo code BELL at manscaped.com. Thank you always, Manscaped, for my smooth ball. Uh. All right, moving on to WWE Raw, we had WWE Women's Tag Team Champion Piper Niven versus Natalia match. But before this match, we saw Tegan hanging out with Katana and Kaden backstage with Nikki Cross just being a weirdo 
chilling in the back. What happened to you and Indy and Candace? And Chelsea Greenwood Piper comes in to annoy Tegan again. And Tegan, after weeks of being on TV, oh, she's feeling a lot more comfortable. So she fights back. She's a little feisty. She said, I'm a TV regular now. So she fires back, showing a lot more character. But anyway, in this match, we saw Piper with this new gear, a bit reminiscent of Awesome Kong almost. This match was good. I love seeing so much fire from Natty. That really stood out. She looked super crisp and energetic. But at the end, with the distraction, I guess from Chelsea, Natty loses focus, letting Piper pick up a win with Basement Crossbody. Post-match beatdown on Natty and Tegan runs in for a save. This was interesting because, you know, last NXT episode, Tegan was giving a bit of a heel vibe, being all weird to Lyra. Here, though, it looks like she's going to be in a babyface tag team with Natty, who, come to think of it, was also kind of heelish to Tegan just recently. So we'll see. I feel like it's going to be the game of who will turn on another first. From the track record, definitely Natty, but who needs it more? Tegan. Anyway, this match was fun. Stratified. We then had Rhea Ripley versus Shayna Baszler singles match. And before this match, Rhea cuts a promo saying every woman wants her title, but this is her division and mommy will always be on top. Uh. Yes. She makes me wonder if I should be on the bottom. And this match, oh my God, was so good. Like seeing Rhea in the ring, seeing how great she is, just makes me so frustrated that we don't get to see her more often. She's just so good in the ring. And this match again was really good, but it felt also really fresh. It was really cool that at points it felt more like a fight than a match. Early on, Rhea was selling the heck out of Shayna's strikes and she sold that arm injury from Shayna's devastating arm stomp. It was so good. But then the champion came back at Shayna super strong. I really wanna see this full match because Shayna looked better than ever in a long time, especially the finish where Shayna reversed Riptide into an arm bar, then Rhea holding her up for a powerbomb that was such a good spot. But then we saw Irresistible Force Nia Jax walking with a vengeance for ruining last week's match. I guess everyone's welcomed in the ringside with Raquel Rodriguez and then Zoe Stark coming in. And Zoe then attacks Rhea in the ring finishing this match in no contest. And at the end, Zoe Stark is the one standing tall kicking both Nia and Rhea, basically inserting herself into this battle of badasses. I mean, I guess it works as five-way too. I will say it felt a little more focused as Fatal 4-Way match, especially because all four of them had such a strong stint as the badasses throughout their entire career. But I think it works this way too, and Zoe is phenomenal in multi-women matches, so I'm excited about that. So I'll say stratified. And after this match, during the Miz's interview, Nia interrupts and just takes the mic away from everyone and says she's still standing strong, looking pretty, and she's the one squashing everyone on Raw. Nice. It's just so iconic. I really love and appreciate that she's in this battle of badasses. Because let's be honest, they are all badasses, yes. But we need some diva. We need some spice. We need some glitter. And Naya is definitely bringing all that into this feud. So I really, really love that. Backstage, NXT Women's Champion Becky Lynch runs into Indy, who's like a freaking parrot at this point. That title I didn't lose. The title I didn't lose. So Becky's like, all right, I will make this match official with Adam so you can shut the hell up. She did not say that. And on her way, she runs into the World Women's Champion Rhea Ripley for a tense face-off. Yes, we want this match. Then later in Adam Pierce's office, she confirmed that championship defense against Indy for next week. Then Zaya comes in for a face-off with Becky and she's like, where's my chance, huh? Then Jade Cargill walks in to say, nice title. Becky's like getting the line and Jade's like, what line? Triple H has been cutting all the lines for me. <laughs> Jade is so funny to me. She's like playing so nice with everyone so far and I cannot wait for her to finally cut that shit and start getting physical with these ladies. By the way, which face-off did you like more? Jade and Charlotte or Jade and Becky? I am kind of more into Jade and Charlotte more. It was definitely a little more, I don't know, Real Housewives. A little more bitchy, a little more diva for me. So that's why I was like a little more into it. But what about you? What excites you more? On AEW's side, I already covered the Tuesday Dynamite episode where Soraya out of nowhere lost the title. Still super bitter about it, but whatever. So this week was Sky Blue show. Well, the emo Sky Blue, because since getting misted by Julia Hart, she got a little weird. Not a lot, just a little bit. So on Rampage, we saw her go against Emi Sakura for the number one contendership for the TBS championship. And Emi was, as always, killing this evil anime witch character. <laughs> and Sky Blue walked in here a bit emo, no more smiling, but bit pouty and a bit of a dark eye makeup. Loved Emmy's crossbody into the stairs and very delayed butterfly backbreaker, but Sky hit super kick followed by Code Blue for the win. It was a very enjoyable match, but to be really nitpicky, I don't fully understand the booking decision to pair Sky, who's turning to the dark side, with a heel here. You know, with a babyface opponent, I feel like Sky could have shown her darker character change a bit more, you know? But still, the match was fun. I'm stratified. And on Collision, we had the TBS Championship, Chris Statlander versus Sky Blue, who's now a slight 
could be even more emo with a little bit more eye makeup. And Sky starts the match by pulling Statlander's hair where Stat's like, oh, what's going on? This is not you, Sky. And as we all know by now, Statlander, we believe in. And this match was yet another banger of TBS Championship defense. Sky Blue looked awesome here with the Satellite DDT. And we got this amazing spot of Sky hitting Avalanche Powerbomb on Stat and connecting it with Top Rope Crossbody. But Statlander catches her midair and slams her down. And Sky Blue comes hot for Stat with crowd going wild for her. But Statlander catches Sky during leg scissors and hits Saturday Night Fever for the win in an awesome, impressive match. Post-match, Statlander offers a handshake, but Sky refuses because she's emo. And then Emo Willow runs out to save Sky Blue from shaking Statlander's hand. I guess. I don't know. Yeah, so remember, Willow was also sprayed by Julia Hart, and that Julia Hart emo virus is spreading everywhere. You know what? This is an interesting thing. You know, obviously, AEW storyline, I'm here for it. On one hand, I'm really intrigued to see where this is gonna go, how these characters will develop, but on the other hand, a little, slightly little bigger hand here, I'm like, did AEW seriously turn two of the most naturally loved baby faces into heel or tweener or whatever the f this is? Prove me wrong if this is some kind of a storyline where Sky and Willow fight this deadly infection, adventurous journey of finding themselves. I'll be all for it. But for now, having this baby faces that people genuinely adore and connect with is so hard in wrestling, period. So I don't really understand the decision at this moment to turn literally Willow and Sky Blue, who is so naturally, organically over to heels. So, uh, weird. But the match itself was spectacular. And Statlander here is just doing God's work, really putting over TBS Championship. And she said, AW Women's Championship, who? TBS Championship is a pro. Primary Women's Championship. At least she's trying that. I'm very, very proud of her stratified. And let's catch up with CJ Perry, formerly known as Lana of WWE. Now her nickname is Hot and Flexible, and she's now offering manager and guidance service backstage with Miro being annoyed apparently about this. So we'll see. This is an interesting decision given that, you know, Lana being paired with people outside of Miro didn't do very well in WWE, so it's kind of interesting that AEW is doing this again, but on Impact Wrestling, we had some intergender action. We had Jordan Grace going against Eric Young, Dirty Dango, Jake Something, and Champagne Singh for the winner getting the number 20 entrant in the Call Your Shot Gauntlet match. And this match is another prime example of Impact Wrestling just being so good at booking intergender wrestling. It just flows organically, doesn't feel forced. By the way, Sonny Kiss, this is a place you should go. And Jordan Grace here have some cool moments attacking Jake Something and Eric Young, but ultimately falls to the power game of the Giants here, and later in the match, she becomes the target of the heels Sing and Dango, where she later fights 1-2 to two looking badass, and she also hits Jake and Sing in Tower of Doom spot going for the pin, but Dango hits top rope last dance leg drop on Jordan looking so scary on her neck, and from this spot, she basically disappears from the match. She didn't win this, but she looked damn badass, so I was stratified about this. Again, Impact Wrestling does intergender wrestling better than any big promotions. And then we got Tasha Steeles versus Courtney Rush. Before Dion and Tasha challenge MK Ultra at Bound for Glory for the Knockouts Tag Championship. The match was good. I love when Tasha was just twerking up and down, taunting everyone. And it was funny when Courtney got all confused, tried to tag Jessica in, but it's not a tag match. And at the end, Tasha picks up the win with impressive cutter, heading into a title match with the win, with champions watching them backstage. You know, I think team of Dion and Tasha is really interesting case. I, I think they're really good friends behind the scenes from what I've heard. I guess there is a lot of history between them. But to be quite frank, as a viewer, I don't really see the cohesion as a team. Like, Diana is a virtuosa, the elegance, the master of the skill, the poshness, where Tasha's character is like more like urban, down to earth, spicy, having fun. Oh, I can't roll my tongue. So I'm like, this seems like oil and water. Like, if it was approached as odd couple pair, I might have bought it more, but I don't know. I'm not fully buying it yet. But anyway, the match was fun, and we know that tag match against Masha and Killer Kelly will be so good. And lastly, we saw Kylan King interview back stage and she revealed that Taylor Wilde, her partner, had been taken out with a tire iron attack by Jody Threat. Then the authority figure Santino Morella comes in and questioned how King knew that Wilde was taken out with a tire iron, forcing her to confess it was in fact her who took out her own partner out of action. She then says it is no longer long live the coven, it is long live the king. Kylan King is so freaking talented in the ring, but given the somewhat lackluster nature of the tag division, I think she was kind of sidelined for a long time in knockoffs division, not showing the full potential. So hoping this will bring her into some exciting main storylines as a single star. And noteworthy for me is they did not have Trinity or Mickey James in this show. And I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? Back
And that is it for this week's Women's Wrestling Weekly. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I know that there are tons of interviews for me to edit. I know it's all in my hard drive. I will be working on it. But this week, I'll be a little busy again because Impact Wrestling Bomb for Glory is in Chicago and I got some big things cooking up here. So stay tuned for that and catch up with what I'm up to this weekend with Impact Wrestling, Bomb for Glory, Mickey, I don't know. Mm-mm-mm. Connect with me on social media at DSShin on Instagram and ring the bell DS on X. All right, see you next time. Bye.